For this specific shed, you will need an area at least 213cm by 127cm. Check all parts against the parts list before beginning construction and identify each component. The components will all feature part numbers on them for easy identification. You may wish to remove all of the washers from their grids before you start. There is a plastic coating on the majority of the shed components to protect them during transport. This should be removed before construction as it can be tough to remove later. Using your instructions, refer to the parts needed for base installation and identify the required pieces. For this section you will also need the following tools. A posi drive screwdriver, tape measure, square and a spirit level. Lay out your rear base frame lengths and align the screw holes before securing together with four screws. Align one end of the rear frame to one of the slide frame pieces at a right angle and secure with the screws. Align the other end with the second side frame and secure as before. Place the front corner framing in position and secure at the corner with the screws. Secure the front frame on the opposite corner with two screws. The door threshold should then be placed over the ends of the front base framing. Do not secure this yet though. At this point you want to make sure that your shed is in the correct position on your base as well as making sure the pieces are square across the angles. Use a tape measure to check this. Once you are completely satisfied that the base is square, mark with a pencil through the holes in the frame and onto the concrete below. Move the frame out to the side and drill down into the concrete at each marked point. Insert plugs into each hole. Secure the base down into the drilled holes with 16 screws positioned around the entire frame. Check that everything is still square and level before moving onto the walls. Using your instructions, refer to the parts needed for wall assembly and identify the required pieces. You will also need a pair of pliers. Over the front right corner, position the first two panels overlapping the joints. Affix the panels to the base frame using screws and washers. To affix the panels together, thread a bolt through the front holes in the middle of the panel with a washer and secure it with a nut on the other side. Use pliers to hold the nut steady. Repeat this for the opposite corner with the same panels. Place the top front framing end to end and brace together using the C-shaped plate. Secure the plate using screws through the pre-drilled holes. Insert two door runners into each end of the framing as shown. These will serve as support for the shed doors. This framing can now slot into the shed, with the opening facing into the building. Secure the framing through the front panels with screws and washers. Once you have the front corners complete, align the third wall panel against the previous and secure it along the bottom edge and middle. To connect the side panels, use bolts and washers and thread through the middle set of holes, securing with a nut on the other side. Position a rear wall panel to overlap and form a corner. Repeat this for the opposite corner too, with the same shaped panels. With these walls constructed, you now need to install the top panel framing. Position the side framing over the top of each side panel as shown, making sure the lip of the frame is facing into the building. Affix each frame through the top of the side panel with screws and washers. Each frame will require five screws. For the rear frame, align the rear framing bars and secure through the pre-drilled holes with two screws. Place this frame against the rear panels as shown, between the two side frames. Affix each frame through the rear panel with screws and washers. The remaining rear panel can now be attached, making sure the edges of the panel are on the inside of the building. Attach the panel at the top and bottom with screws and washers, and in the middle of the panel with nuts and bolts. Place the door threshold over the base frame and secure with two screws at each end.
Using your instructions, refer to the parts needed for roof frame assembly and identify the required pieces. Begin by removing the two top screws from the front framing plate. Position the door framing to the left of the doorway, making sure the tabs are in the same position shown. Attach the frame at the top and bottom with screws and washers and to the middle of the panel with nuts and bolts. Repeat this for the right side of the doorway, again making sure that the framing is aligned as shown. Insert the top door crossbar over the bar at the top of the doorway and secure with the two screws at each end. Place the triangular apex panel onto the top of the door framing and secure in place with three screws. Repeat this for the opposite panel and secure as before. Once these are attached, secure the L brackets into the corner of each apex piece. Do not attach the adjoining bolt yet. Position the triangular panel on the rear framing and secure it with three screws. Repeat this for the last panel, securing it in the same way. Position the two different L brackets against the ends of the long roof beams as shown and secure with nuts and bolts. Place the two other beams together as shown and bolt together through the middle, securing it with nuts. Do not affix with the bolts at each end yet. You can now position each ridge bar in between the apex panels, aligning the plates with the pre-drilled holes and securing with a bolt, washer and nut from the outside of the building. Use the central beam to bridge the gap across the apex. You will find you will need to pry the beams apart to fit either side of the triangular framing. Affix with nuts and bolts at each end. Lastly, adjoin the two triangular panels with a nut and bolt on the front and back of the building through the L bracket. Using your instructions, refer to the parts needed for roof assembly and identify the required pieces. Arrange the first roof panel over the front right quarter of the shed. Make sure the panel is orientated to leave a slight overhang on the bottom edge. Affix the panel down through the top into the roof beams and side framing. Secure the other rear right panel in the same method. Arrange the other side of the roof in the same way with the second panel at the front of the building. Slide the front roof framing over the front of the roof panels. Use washers and screws through the top of the frame to secure them in place in the middle of the frame, leaving the apex and eaves holes. Slip the side framing onto the horizontal edges of the shed, using washers and screws to secure them in the middle as well. Align the corner caps over each corner of the shed and secure in place with a screw through the top. Align the ridge cover over the apex and secure it with the screws at each end and in the middle with washers and screws. Slide the plastic apex capping over the front of the apex framing and attach it at the top with a screw. Repeat this for the rear apex too. Position the plastic vents within the gap at the front and back of the shed. Secure these in place with a screw on either side. Using the small caps, go around the inside of your shed and cap off any bare screws. With the main body of the shed now complete, the next step is the doors. Using your instructions, refer to the parts needed for the door assembly and identify the required pieces. Attach the side framing to each side of the door panel, making sure the eight holes are at the top of the panel and the framing points into the door. Secure the other side framing with nuts and bolts at four points on each side. Arrange the diagonal framing bars. Make sure the framing pieces overlap at the edge as shown and secure through the frame with a single screw. Then secure them with bolts, washers and a nut into the middle holes. Attach the framing bar to the top of the left door and secure with screws at both ends. Attach the bottom framing bar to the bottom of the left door and secure this with screws at both ends too. Repeat this for the right door panel. Align the door handles on the doors and secure with bolts and nuts. The small plastic door catches need to be affixed to each side of the bottom framing of each door using a nut and bolt. Slide the base of the door into the groove in the threshold of the shed and then push the top of the door into position. The holes in the top of each door need to line up with the previously inserted runners. The door holes are at varying heights to allow you to position the door for optimum movement. Use screws to secure the doors to the runners on each side, making sure they run smoothly and are square within the doorway. Use a standard household oil lubricant on the runners and wipe away any excess. Your metal shed is now complete. If you have purchased a Metal Shed Foundation Kit, please continue to watch. 
Before beginning your foundation kit, check all parts against the parts list and identify each component. Make sure the end tabs of each beam are straight using a pair of pliers. Start your kit by connecting two of the longer pieces at the end using the supply screws to create a larger piece of framing. Slide the smaller bar at a right angle to the large bar and secure with screws into the outermost screw holes. Secure the other smaller bar in the same manner. Align the second framing bar and secure the ends in the same position. Then slide the final frame between the two smaller lengths and secure at each end with screws. Arrange the frame within the shed ensuring that it is central and squarely aligned over each side. The frame tab should overlap the base framing of the shed. Use a small metal drill bit to create pilot holes through the screw holes and into the base frame. You can now lay a floor over the top of your foundation kit. Here we're using 9mm OSB sheet board. This will need to be secured as shown into the metal shed foundation, making sure the edges are flush. Screws for this are not supplied and requirements will vary depending on your flooring material of choice. Your foundation kit is now complete.